Hello, I'm Frankie Ward and it is my absolute pleasure to introduce you to the weekly Riff Review, your bite-sized refresher to all things League of Legends. And before we start, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at LOL Esports so you never miss those news headlines as they happen. NA League fans rejoice, the LCS is back. Sort of. The league kicked off the new season with its new lock-in tournament, giving teams a chance to compete and experiment in a competitive environment without risking their precious, precious LCS record. Aside from a few players still stuck in Visa Purgatory, this weekend saw the LCS teams finally unveil their new rosters after a long and grueling offseason. This meant that we finally got to see all of the region's new star imports, like Alfari, Sword Art, and of course, everyone's favorite mid laner turned ADC turned back to mid laner, Perks. But Sword Art and Perks' debuts were not exactly ideal, with both players losing their first game of the tournament. But don't worry, Tier 7 and C9 fans, the LCS newcomers made it up by winning their remaining games of the week. Perks assured fans that his debut loss was, in fact, a prank. Uh, yeah, yesterday was just a prank. Uh, it wasn't actually uh, us playing, we had our academy team subbed in. And after nearly perfect gaming fly quest in his next match, he might not be lying. It's starting to feel a lot like 2017 again in the LPL. Two weeks into the new season and legacy organizations Team WE, EDG and RNG are all sitting at the top of the standings. A nostalgic sight that brings a tear to veteran fans' eyes. WE and EDG's rise isn't that surprising given their off-season upgrades. RNG's moves, however, left many viewers skeptical. And when I say moves, I'm mainly referring to RNG's longtime mid laner Xiaohu, Rolls swapping to top. But two weeks into the season and RNG are proving the doubt is wrong, playing completely opposite to the bot lane focused playstyle we've come to expect from the team Uzi used to lead. Instead, RNG are playing for Xiaohu up top, who's quickly acclimated to his new surroundings, even bringing some mid lane picks with him, like Orianna in their win against Suning. But you don't beat the world finalists with just one guy popping off. The rest of RNG are playing exceptionally, especially their new jungler Wei, whose plays have been essential to RNG's early success. Yes, the final little barrel, so it's support for support. Gala gets jumped on, but he jumps up into Wait. the air and there's nothing he can do with a three man lilting lullaby. And this is all but. Time will tell if Xiaohu will continue to thrive in his new role, or if the LPL legend will find himself back in the mid lane in the future. Heading over to South Korea, the LCK finally returned, and as you'd expect, opening day featured T1. You know, the team that's got the best player ever in Faker. Except Faker didn't play. In fact, none of last year's starting lineup played, except for top laner Kana. Instead, T1 paired Kana and new support Carrier with three young talents they've been spending the last couple of years developing, and they performed well. Like, really well, beating the new star studded Hanwha Life Esports in their opener. But the night's biggest surprise came in T1's AD carry Gumiyushi. The 18 year old played out of his mind, getting the best of AD carry legend Deft. So, come T1's next match against reigning world champions Dan Wong Kia, the young player's reward was to keep his starting spot alongside jungler Ellen and Gumayushi repaid his team's faith in full, getting the first pentakill of the season. Khan is just eradicated so early. Unfortunately, Faker doesn't find too much with the ultimate, but Gumayushi's there with the quadra kill, Every making single a player penta. As they all go freeze. <laughs> yeah, they all lose their minds and Faker's just... Dan Wan eventually won the series, but T1 made it incredibly close. Thanks mostly to Gumayushi, who tried his best to carry the team in the final game. And he almost succeeded ending things 10 and 2 and just narrowly missing out on a second pentakill. Can I just remind you that he did this versus the reigning world champions? If Gumiyushi can keep this level of performance up, T1 may just well have found their next superstar. With the first full week of the 2021 season complete, let's take a look at the global standings across the major regions, minus Europe's LEC, which begins this Friday. Starting off in NA, 100 Thieves, Team Liquid and TSM are tied for the first place in Group A of the lock-in tournament, while CLG was unfortunately knocked out on Sunday. Over in Group B, Evil Geniuses sit in first as the sole undefeated team at the tournament, with Cloud9 right behind them. 
EDG, WE and RNG all sit at the top of the LPL standings, alongside a retooled LNG roster featuring former Griffin star jungler Tarzan. And finally in the LCK, to no one's surprise, Damwon Kier ended week one undefeated, along with the league's kings of the regular season in Genji. After months of waiting, Yoni's finally made his competitive debut, and he's brought some friends. Yoni, Samira, Seraphine, and Rao have all made it into pro's hands, and Samira's their clear favourite. The blade swinging marksman is one of the most contested picks across the major regions, with teams either banning her or frantically trying to grab her if she somehow makes it through. It seems like pros just can't keep their eyes off the desert rose. Speaking of new champions, Viego will be the next champion to make his way to Summoner's Rift, ready to take over the bodies of every champion he slays. I can already imagine the Bananas Viego plays that are gonna flood the internet once the Ruin King makes his way onto the live servers. I'm Frankie Ward and that has been our first episode of the weekly Riff Review. Do not forget to follow us on Twitter at LOL Esports so we can hang out again next week as I break down the latest news headlines from League of Legends. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.